church with a big heart. I'm Dimple Vitito and it's an honor to welcome you to our church. We are so glad that you've decided to worship with us today. Be sure to like and share our worship service so that everyone can hear the good news that is promised today. Let us now begin with worship.
in heaven, and how would you know that? Um, I don't know how old you will be in heaven. Um, and there's really no way of knowing that. That's not in scripture. Um, you know, people pass away when they are uh, 67, uh, 102, um, and maybe even a couple minutes old. Uh, so we don't know uh, how old uh, we will be in heaven. But we do know that we will be made new and the scriptures say that there will be no more pain or suffering and we'll be praising God in some way or in some fashion or another, singing and things like that. So that's a great question that we have, but the Bible is mute on that subject. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, you never know. You never know. Thanks. You're welcome. Today's reading comes to us from the Gospel according to Luke, the 12th chapter, verses 15 through 21. And here is today's reading. And Jesus said to them, Take care, be on your guard against all kinds of greed, for one's life does not consist in the abundance of possessions. Then he told them a parable. The land of a rich man produced abundantly. And he thought to himself, What should I do? For I have no place to store my crops. Then he said, I will do this. I will pull down my barns and build larger ones. And there I will store all my grain and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, you have ample goods laid up for many years. Relax, eat, drink, be merry. But God said to him, you fool, this very night your life is being demanded of you, and the things you have prepared, whose, whose will they be? So it is with these who store up treasures for themselves, but are not rich toward God. Brothers and sisters, this is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Today we start a brand new sermon series. It's entitled Advent Conspiracy. Now this isn't a sermon series that I developed all on my own. It's been a sermon series that's been around for several years. In fact, I've used this sermon series in every church that I've been the lead pastor of because I think it's beautiful. I think it's powerful and I believe it's necessary to have in churches today, especially churches in America. A lot of churches, every year we uh, conspire together to preach this sermon series, Advent Conspiracy. And the reason that this sermon series uh, came about, uh, and it is so pop and is so popular, is because it is needed. As a pastor, when you look around at the world, at America, and everything that goes on during this Christmas season, uh, when you look at everything that's happening, you realize the people are missing the message of Jesus Christ and caught up into the season of Christmas. We've, as Americans, as people in progressive cultures, we've twisted, we've distorted the real meaning, essence, and message of Christmas. It's become something else. It's focused around consumerism, buying things, getting things, being at this party, that party. When we look at culture, Christmas is not, has become, is not the most happiest time of the year anymore. Rather, it's the most stressful time of the year. People are depressed the most at Christmas. There's more and more isolation. More and more bad things are happening during the Christmas season instead of happy, joyous, holy things happening. So that's why we have this sermon series, Advent Conspiracy, to challenge you to worship fully, to spend less and to give more, 
to make Christmas what it should be. You know, if you don't believe me about uh, people distorting the message of Christmas, you know, I'm 43 years old, and I remember growing up in the 80s and 90s that uh, we didn't even talk about Christmas. I actually couldn't do anything around Christmas, buy gifts until after Thanksgiving. Actually, uh, I can remember getting Thanksgiving money and going to the store uh, on Thanksgiving or the, or the day after, and there weren't a lot of things out. But just a few years ago, I remember going into Home Depot on Halloween, November 30th. And I walked into Home Depot. There weren't Halloween decorations on bargain sales, no. There were Christmas trees, Christmas lights. Christmas is coming earlier and earlier. In fact, this year, me, me and the kids, we went to the Dollar General store, the Dollar Store, Dollar Tree, uh, on Halloween, uh, getting candles for our All Saints Day. And guess what? They had a little rack of Halloween on sale stuff, and it was decorated for Christmas. Christmas, consumerism, the urge, the compulsion, the advertising to buy stuff is becoming earlier and earlier every year, which is why we need these sermon series like, like Advent Conspiracy to help us really live in to the Christmas season, the season in the church that we call Advent. Now, Advent starts uh, in December, the first Sunday in December this year, and it runs for four weeks. And Advent comes from the Latin, <clears throat> the Latin verb, which means uh, coming or comings. You see, this season of Advent in the church, we're supposed to be self-reflecting. A lot like we do in Lent, you know, those 40 days of Lent where we give up something, where we fast, uh, and all in an order to get closer to God. We do those practices through that whole season uh, to become more holy, to get closer to God, to really experience what it means to be forgiven by, in, and through the death, resurrect, death, suffering death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. It's the season of preparation, getting us ready to remember the death of Jesus Christ and to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ so that we can have this newness of life. That season of preparation is Lent. And this season of Advent is also a season of preparation. You see, Advent, because it means comings, we celebrate the first coming of Jesus Christ, where he came and as, a, as a defenseless, vulnerable babe who was born in a barn, wrapped in swaddling clothes and rags, laid in a manger, in Bethlehem thousands of years ago, God left heaven, took on flesh, the vulnerable, innocent flesh of a babe, and lived with us, came to us to show us his way, his love, his power. So remember how Jesus came as a babe on December 25th. We remember that the birth of Jesus Christ. But we also remember and celebrate that when Jesus was going up to heaven after he died, when he was ascending into heaven, he said, as you see me leave, I am coming back again in this way. So we recognize that Jesus is coming again. And so this Advent season, the season where we celebrate the comings of Jesus Christ, how he came as a babe on December 25th, his birthday. And we also remember that he will come again and he will confront the nations of the world. He will confront people of the world. We remember that one day we will stand face to face with Jesus Christ and be held accountable for our actions here in our life. And so we celebrate and we remember that during this Advent season, we start asking ourselves that Jesus is coming back. And if he came back today and he talked to me face to face and he was holding me accountable for my actions in my life, would I be ready? Would I be ready to be held accountable? If Jesus today looked at my priorities, 
looked at my life, looked at my actions, looked at my motivations and confronted me face to face today, would I be ready? Would you? Would you be ready? And this is what this Advent conspiracy is seeking to do, is to have us focus on what's happening in our lives and to help us look at how we approach this Christmas season. Are we getting caught up into the commercialism of Christmas? Are we seeking to run around to buy the perfect gift, to spend, uh, spend money to buy the perfect gifts, the epic gifts? Are we surrounded by consuming and getting and doing this and doing that? Are we caught up into the Christmas rush, into the, the stressfulness of this season? Are we consumed on getting and purchasing things? You know, this is exactly what this today's scriptures were talking about. This rich person who has a lot of stuff. And when we look at us Americans, we, we have a lot of stuff, don't we? Even if you don't make a lot of money still, but living in America, we have a lot of stuff. And this ruler today in the gospel according to Luke, or this person today in the gospel according to Luke, he had a lot of stuff. And he's like, I got all these things, and I'm going to get even more things, and so I'm going to build these, these, these bigger things so that I can hold more things. And Jesus was looking at this person and he says, you know, you fool, you're consumed with trying to get and have and keep all of this stuff that is here one day and gone tomorrow and you've forgotten about the most important things. And because of that, you could be held accountable this very night on what you value. And this parable frames and starts this sermon series. Are we like this foolish person in Luke where we're consumed with stuff? Or, or, or are our priorities in focusing on this Christmas season? You know, I was looking at stats and preparing for today's sermon. And I looked at what the average person was spending throughout the course of, of, of many years. And, and there was a projection that uh, people, the American household is projected to spend almost $1,400 this Christmas season on Christmas gifts. The average household, almost $1,400 in this one time of the year. I looked at another piece of research and it says the average household gives almost $900 a year to the church $1,400 the stuff during Christmas one time one season $900 a year to the family of God. Our priorities are messed up. And so I want to challenge you. How, how are you going to approach this Christmas season? You know, you might be thinking the whole time I'm preaching this, uh, Pastor Brandon, turn around. You know, it's November 15th, the middle of November, and you're already decorating for Christmas. And yeah, <laughs> we have decorated today. We've decorated for Christmas. We have the Christmas tree up over there. And we've decided to, to do this very early uh, because 2020 has been a really, really, really difficult year. And we wanted to bring some joy into our home that we're quarantining in. And so we've decorated. But you know, my wife and I, we made a very conscious decision when our kids were very little on how we would always approach the Christmas season. 
And what you see behind me is kind of a representation of our focus as a, as a family, what we choose to, to focus Christmas uh, on. And you can see that there's nothing but nativity scenes, crushes all behind me, celebrating, remembering the birth of Jesus Christ. You know, for a few years now, so now that the kids are old enough, we've made a conscious decision that either on Christmas Eve or Christmas morning, we as a family, we feed the homeless. We take time, either on Christmas Eve or waking up at 4 a.m. before the presents are opened, before we even have breakfast, we go and we feed and eat with the homeless. Because that's, that's what Christmas is all about. That's our overarching priority. To instill in our children and in our congregations the true meaning of Christmas. It's giving ourselves to others. It's giving. And when we're able to give that way when we're able to serve that way our worship is full we want to give more and more and we spend less and less so what's your priority as we start this sermon series i challenge you what is your priority this christmas season is it stuff or is it intentionally doing things so that you can worship more fully, where you can spend less, and where you can give more to the glory of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? Amen. that you enjoyed worshiping with us and were spiritually nourished. Please be sure to share this service and remember, you can follow us on Facebook and Instagram. It was such a joy to have you with us. 
We are the little church with the big heart, which means there's plenty of room for you here with us. If you do not have a church home and have enjoyed worshiping with us, please send us a Facebook message and Pastor Brandon will get with you soon. Have a blessed and holy week. See you next Sunday. Bye.